Welcome to Tonka 10 in the series of 15. So in this Tonka, uh, the main points are, this is uh, Tsongkhapa's age 40 to 42. The main things that happen in this Tonka is um, he meets his, who's to be his foremost disciple, Gyaltsab Dharma Rinchen, they meet for the first time. Then soon after that, Tsongkhapa has a realization of emptiness. Um, and then the major event after that is he makes extensive offerings to this Maitreya statue at Zingji and there's some miraculous appearances. Um, and then he gives very extensive teachings in, in, in Lhasa area in Tibet where the monks from all the major study centers in that area come to listen. And then finally he meets his main teacher, um, Rindawa, uh, Rindawa Shona Rojo. They meet again after a long time. So to begin, again we, we begin at the, um, the bottom center of this tanka. You see Lama Tsongkhapa is wearing a yellow hat and he's giving Dharma teachings. So at this time um, he's teaching on um, let's see, the compendi Compendium of Valid Cognition um, by Dharma Kirti. It's about Buddhist logic and um, how, to, how, how to distinguish an, um, a valid mind from a, a wrong concept or an invalid mind. So how we realize things. So at this time Tsongkhapa um, says, so at this time uh, uh, Gyaltsa Dharma Rinchen, he, um, he met Tsongkhapa for the first time. So from the, from the biography here it says, listening to Tsongkhapa teach about how to order the path according to the commentary on the Compendium of Valid Cognition, Gyaltsa uh, Jay developed powerful heartfelt faith. With tears in his eyes he made prostrations and requested that for as long as Tsongkhapa lived, May he never be parted from them, from him, and, might, and, and that he might be permitted to place uh, Tsongkhapa's feet on the crown of his head. So this is a kind of out of respect, it's a symbolic kind of it's something to say. So basically here, the, the, the teaching Tsongkhapa was giving was also important because he's not only teaching Buddhist logic and valid cognition, but how through logic and reasoning one establishes all the stages of the path to enlightenment. How does one establish that um, re past and future lives uh, are possible? How does one establish that karma, the law of cause and effect, is possible? How does one establish that uh, a fully enlightened being and then his Dharma teaching and his spiritual community exist? And how does one establish that the pos it's possible to be completely free from um, samsara and ignorance and so forth? So um, that's the teaching Sambhak Kapu was giving at that time. Then you just look to the left of that in the Tanka. There's a sort of clouds with, um, at the top, this the sort of yogi sitting in orange robes with snakes coming from behind the halo behind his head. So that's Nagarjuna. He's because um, uh, Naga Naga is like a kind of snake spirit in Indian uh, mythology. So um, yeah, Nagarjuna and then his his um, foremost kind of followers: um, uh, Arya Deva, Buddha Palita, Bhava Veka, and Chandrakirti. So Tsongkhapa has a dream in which the five of these, these five great, you know, uh, scholar yogis, um, especially who focused on explaining the ultimate view of emptiness or shunyata that the Buddha taught in the sutras, especially the, the, the Bodhisattva Yana sutras. So Tsongkhapa has a dream where these five are discussing um, whether inherent existence, uh, whether things inherently exist or not. So while, the, so while Tsongkhapa is having this dream, then one of the five, he's kind of a tall, has a bluish hue, a tall Indian pundit, he, he, he stands up and walks over to Tsongkhapa and places a text on Tsongkhapa's head. Um, and that text, Tsongkhapa realizes, that's Buddha Palita, and that's his, his commentary on Nag Nagarjuna's root wisdom, which he named after himself. It's called Buddha Palita. So in the morning, Tsongkhapa wrote, awoke from this vivid dream. In the morning, he opened that text to, I'm not sure which chapter and verse, but he opened that text to one page. And then as he read down through the verses and thought about what Buddha Palita is saying, then as he was reading and thinking, he had, a, he had a, his first um, uncontrived, valid um, uh, realization of emptiness. Right? It's, it's such a powerful experience that his hair stood on end, tears poured from his eyes. And in that, that, very, that very time, then he wrote um, this very eloquent praise of Shakyamuni Buddha, praising Shakyamuni Buddha for teaching dependent arising. Because it's independent, Tsongkhapa saw that so, I mean, the Buddha's, probably the Buddha's most profound deed was to teach how nothing has inherent or um, inherent existence or existence from its own side. Why? Because everything is an interdependently arising phenomenon. Things uh, arise, come into existence, and things uh, abide in existence, independence only on other things, independence upon causes and conditions, independence upon their parts, 
and um, by observing the parts and labeling a thing, thereby a thing comes into existence. So things also exist in dependence upon mental imputation or concepts, in short. So there's, when you search for the thing, um, for anything, um, you cannot find it existing uh, through the force of its own properties or uh, in and of its own right. It always exists in dependence upon a collection of parts and then imputation of it um, in dependence upon those parts. So Tsongkhapa wrote this, this famous praise called Denda Dopa in Tibetan or um, in praise of valid cognition. It's translated in English and we'll attach it, you know, give a link to it in the notes below. All right. So then looking up, going clockwise around the Tanka, let's skip to the, the very top, uh, 12 o'clock. And there's a statue, you see this golden statue with some uh, monks uh, putting offerings out at the feet and making prayers to it. So this is again the Zingji, uh, Zingji uh, statue of Maitreya that appeared in earlier Tankas. So during the Days of Miracles, which I explained earlier, Tsongkhapa makes extensive offerings and prayers to the statue. And it's said during, uh, for 20 days, then Tsongkhapa and others had a direct vision of um, a whole bunch of Buddhas. I'll read from the biography again. Then during the Days of Miracles, he arranged vast magnificent offerings to the Zingji Zhou, Zhou which is the Zingji Maitreya statue, during all 15 days and made extensive prayers for the Buddhist teachings for the well-being of sentient beings and for benefit and happiness now and in future times. By the force of making heartfelt requests, invoking the objects of offering to come to that place, all of space was seen to be filled with Buddhas of the five Buddha families, like sesame seeds filling a pod. By seeing these at all times for 20 days, even during the four activities of the period of subsequent attainment. So that means even while sitting, standing, walking, or lying, lying down. Uh, boundless sentient beings of the ten directions were set on the great paths to liberation and omniscience. Right? So that's what's happening in that scene. Then another major event, like I mentioned earlier, just uh, uh, so go down around about uh, 2.30, 2.45, as if the Tanka is a clock. Tsongkhapa is teaching to um, a, whole, a, a whole group of monks. So basically Tsongkhapa went um, uh, back to the Lhasa area and then monks from all the major study centers in Lhasa area, they came to um, they came to attend teachings by Tsongkhapa on um, Kamala Shila's illumination of the middle way, on the Vinaya, and on the graduated uh, the stages of the path to enlightenment. So um, yeah, this is just showing that Tsongkhapa was becoming probably the most influential teacher um, at that time in central Tibet. And then go down. So down just below that, you see there's two groups of um, three monks each meeting. So Tsongkhapa met his, his, one of his first and his um, uh, most influential teachers, Rendawa, met again after a long time. And even at this time, Tsongkhapa has thousands of students, you know, who are about, you know, uh, living around him and receiving teachings by him. And whereas Rendawa, he, he comes with just a handful of students. So Tsongkhapa exceed, far exceeded his own teacher in terms of number of students and influence and renown. And yet, <clears throat> when his teacher comes, Tsongkhapa respectfully goes out on the road to meet him and makes prostrations to him. And then when, because Tsongkhapa is also a teacher of Rendawa, although Rendawa is senior to him, when, when, when Rendawa starts to make prostrations in return, Tsongkhapa says, no, no, don't prostrate, you know, because you're senior to me. And then Rendawa stops and then they, um, they come back and they stay together for a while. And it said during that time, Tsongkhapa requested teachings from Rendawa and very publicly received teachings from Rendawa, and then also Rendawa kind of privately and quietly received teachings from Tsongkhapa on the side. So that ends um, Tanka number 10.